Today in the 21st century, one word that has become synonymous to a secret society or organization is Illuminati. Central to some of the more widely known and elaborate conspiracy theories, the Illuminati have been depicted as lurking in the shadows and pulling the strings and levers of power. They have often been alleged to control world affairs by masterminding events and planting agents in government and corporations in order to establish a new world order. But we are not here to talk about Illuminati or if it exists or not. We are going to talk about an organization that existed way before the Illuminati came into existence. The organization that existed 2000 years ago. The organization simply known as the Nine Unknowns. Founded by the Mauryan ruler Ashoka around 270 BC, the time he converted to Buddhism as an aftermath of the Kalinga War. He founded the society to preserve and develop knowledge that would be dangerous to humanity if it fell into the wrong hands. It is believed that Emperor Ashoka, once aware of the horrors of war, wished to forbid men to ever put their intelligence to evil use. All the researches, ranging from structure of matter to the techniques employed in collective psychology, were to be concealed from the reach of mankind and not allow methods of destruction to fall into the hands of the unqualified. This is where the Nine came into picture. Each of the Nine was supposedly responsible for guarding and improving a single book that dealt with different branches of potentially dangerous knowledge. Traditionally, the books were set to cover the following subjects. Propaganda and psychological warfare, aimed at influencing the opinions or behavior of a large number of people and molding mass opinion. Physiology, that included instructions on how to perform touch of death caused by reversal of the nerve impulse. Microbiology, aimed at experimenting with biology on a microscopic level. In some versions of the myth, it is believed the waters of the Ganges is purified with special microbes designed by the Nine and released into the river somewhere in the Himalayas. Alchemy, including the transmutation of basic metals like lead into precious metals like gold. Communication, aimed at communicating with extraterrestrials. Gravitation, aimed at providing instructions necessary to build a Vimana, sometimes referred to as the ancient UFOs of India, which is supposedly a contribution of the Nine. Cosmology, explaining the capacity to travel at enormous speeds through space-time fabric and time travel, including intra- and inter-universal trips. Light, explaining the capacity to increase and decrease the speed of light, to use it as a weapon by concentrating it in a certain direction, etc. Sociology, including rules concerning the evolution of societies and how to predict their downfall. But why? You see, subjects like cosmology, light, gravitation, communication, etc. are well beyond the scope of modern science, let alone the science of the ancient era. And even if they had such advances, how were Ashoka or his nine men able to master those skills? Today, most of the knowledge about Ashoka's kingdom and his rule is gathered from various edicts scattered across the Indian subcontinent. These contain information on Ashoka's conversion to Buddhism, his efforts to spread the religion, his moral and religious precepts, and his social welfare program. But there is no reference to the aforementioned skills, let alone the nine unknowns. Then the question arises, do they still exist? Did they exist at all? We have been given various signs, perhaps I should say embellishments, over the course of time about the existence of the Nine, Pope Sylvester II being one of them. The legend states that the Pope learned sorcery and built a talking robot that could say yes or no when questioned. Some say he got the knowledge of making the robo by making a pact with the devil, while the others say he got the knowledge from the Nines. Well, we can only wonder how credible that is. 
an occultist by the name of Louis Jacolio, who had stated that the Nine actually existed and they had ample knowledge of aliens, time, light, radiation, etc. But would you believe someone who assumed that Christianity and Hebrew originated in India, who believed in occult sciences and dark magic? Yet again, there is no tangible evidence that supports their existence, which again leads the quest to a dead end. Talbot Mundi popularized the Nine Unknowns to the modern era when he published a novel known simply as The Nine Unknowns. It had various details of the functioning and operations carried out by the Nine, how they recruited their members and how it still existed for more than two millennia. As for the book, Nine individuals, each independent, collectively forming a self-perpetuating board, each known to all the other eight but to no other individual on earth. Each of the nine then appoints nine other known only to him and each of whom supposes his principal to be merely a servant of the nine. They think the orders they receive from him are second-hand orders, passed along. Thus, there are 81 first lieutenants, as it were, who think themselves to be second lieutenants. And each of those 81 employs nine others, in turn known only to himself. But then again, this book is a work of fiction and should be regarded like that. Even so today, various Indian scholars and inventors have been linked to the nine, and it is said that they had attained knowledge from them. So does this mean, if we invent something, the nines have a hand in it? If a Westerner came to India and made some astonishing discovery, the Nines were somehow involved with it. Sounds ridiculous, right? What I have gathered from my search of the Nine is that the society may have existed at some point in the history, but there is no solid evidence that Ashoka was the one who established it. If the Nines still exist today, they should be lauded for keeping themselves a well-guarded mystery, a mystery for more than 2000 years.